Siamo qui con uno degli arrampicatori più forti ed ammirati in questo momento in tutto il mondo. Merito le prime salite sulla 9A più Realization in Seus in Francia e la ormai leggendaria 80 metri 9B eh, Jumbo Love su Clark Mountain. L'anno scorso il suo King Lines è stato presentato proprio qui al Film Festival. Oggi abbiamo il piacere di avere qui in persona il re dei King Lines, Chris Sharma. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Great to have you here. Yeah, yeah it's good to be here. Yeah, so. Let's talk a bit about Jumbo Love, located in the Mojave Desert, 80 meters that you graded 9B, which is, probably makes it the hardest climb in the world at the, at the moment. Uh, my question is, you've always been driven by a sense of aesthetics mm -hmm. and your own personal progression, yeah. famous for not grading yeah. most of your first ascents. What changed? Why did you start grading your climbs? Well, um, you know, I, I guess for a long time I didn't really have much reference for me. Like, uh, I would just go out and do my own thing. And until recent, now recently I started doing more, repeating other people's routes and kind of having more of a sense of kind of what, you know, what was harder, what was easier. And also I kind of felt like because I never graded anything, everyone would kind of, you know, insert their own assumptions. Like yeah. they would kind of grade it themselves. And so I kind of felt like, you know, maybe that wasn't such a good thing, you know, because uh, Really, they didn't, you know, people that have never tried the route will just start putting a grade on it. So, ah. so I figured, well, maybe I should, you know, say something to, you know, try to clarify things better. Did the grade thing also happen because you're basically living in Europe now? I mean, in Europe, it's all about the grade. Mm -hmm. Well, like for me, like it, nothing's really changed. You know, like for me, I just like to go climbing. I just want to find a line that's going to, you know, push me. And um, like you said, like an aesthetic line. But um, there is the other side of I. There's the other side of it, you know. There's the side that's just about being in nature, pushing your limits, that's kind of undefinable. And then there's the side of climbing that is like a sport that, yeah. you know, people want to quantify. They need to be able to, you know, put it in a box somehow, which as much as I don't really like it, that, that part of it, you know, you have to kind of be able to relate to the both sides. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my, my reason for, for grading things, just to kind of... Um, to kind of give people more of an idea and kind of not be so vague. Right, put it into perspective, yeah. like, right? Yeah. The people, way that people can understand it. Speaking of Europe, you're particularly attracted to Mallorca, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, and Spain in general. Is it because of the, is the way they call it, psico block? I love that word. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. deep water soloing, or are there other reasons why Spain is actually, uh, you feel at home in well, that country? Well, I went to Spain, I went to Mallorca for the first time about seven years ago, six oh. years ago, to go deep water soloing, Sico Block. And that, was, and that was the first time I ever um, experienced that, and it kind of totally changed my life, and it re-motivated me. You know, I think, wow. it's, I think it's really normal, you know, throughout your life, you go through periods where you're not so motivated on climbing, or I think it's a really normal thing. And um, I think I might have been going through one of those moments where I just didn't really have a clear objective. I wasn't super motivated on anything, and, and then when I came and I found Sickle Block, I was super inspired again to just um, do new lines, find new projects, and um, experiment with this new style of climbing, you know, called Sickle Block. Yeah. And then just going to Mallorca over and over again, finding Espontas, and just... Um, Incredible. <laughs> Espontas, yeah. Yeah, so just spending, you know, uh, going there 10 or 15 times, I just yeah. kind of started to feel at home there. And, um, you know, over... The, over the years, you know, I've just been traveling for over 10 years and kind of started having the feeling like I want to kind of put some roots down a little bit, mm. not always be living out of my backpack, not always be traveling. So um, I was trying to think about where that could be. Spain seemed like the logical place. Yeah. So. The deep water or the psycho block or deep water soloing, is it like not having the rope, the part that intrigues you or gives you the most thrill? Is that like where you see the future of rock climbing going? Like. I think, Ropeless. I think for me, like Sico Block definitely like uh, captures like the total essence of what I, you know, find like uh, the most perfect part of climbing. Um, yeah, free soloing wow. at your limit, you know. Um, all the free soloing that's being done, you know, without, you know, water below, it's super impressive because, you know, if, obviously if you fall, you're going to die. But uh, because of that, you can't really push your limits. Yeah. So everyone who's doing uh, free soloing is usually climbing, you know, very securely. They're doing something that they know is within their, their limits. They don't, they're not going to get themselves into a situation that, where they could fall. 
Right. And Sikh Blog gives you the freedom to have that same freedom of uh, free soloing, you know, all that air below you, and you can still push your limits and go for it and fall. And, and um, yeah, so for me to find a climb like uh, Espontas was the most perfect thing, you know, because it was, uh, you know, something that was really at my limit, even if there was a rope involved, but yet it was rope free. And also to have the ocean involved, you know. I grew up in Santa Cruz, California, so I was always growing up in the sea, you know, always going surfing. And when I got into climbing, I was always going away from the ocean. Right. And uh, when I started going deep water soloing, it just seemed like the most perfect mixture, you know, to have the ocean and the rock together. And for me, I just feel super comfortable in that environment. So, and you know, with the rock and the ocean. So for me, it's just perfect. I read uh, recently that you never felt any pressure of living up to your potential, that you've never taken climbing very seriously until recently. Until recently? Yeah, I read that in an interview. Um, what has changed uh, in you? Well, I, I still don't really feel any pressure. Like, uh, I feel like, um, I don't, I, I guess maybe what I mean is I don't feel any pressure from external pressure. Right. You know, I've, I've always just been doing what I've been doing and just kind of following my heart and following uh, what motivates me and inspires me. But um, I think recently, in the last few years, um, kind of started to notice, you know, that how finite things are, you know, that, well, I'm 28 now and, you know, there's... Happy birthday, you yeah, just had a birthday yeah, like a thanks. week ago, so... <laughs> yeah, so I mean, if I want to, you know, there's certain things, certain goals that I have and if I want to complete those goals, you know, you know, some of them are pretty, you know, pretty crazy goals, so... I can imagine. It's not like something you just want to keep putting off till, you know, who knows when, you know, yeah. like the, the time to act is now, you know, when I was maybe 15, 16 or 18, you know, time seems so far off, you know, like, oh, no hurry, I can just, you know, I'll just go take six months and go backpacking around India. And uh, I wasn't so focused on, you know, what my goals were. I didn't really know where I was, you know, where I wanted to be. And uh, now I feel really settled in, in like climbing being my life and yeah. my lifestyle. And uh, because of that, I feel more directed to my goals. and. And aware of like the the time to to act, you know. Yeah. Speaking of India, I believe you practice yoga and meditation, and and uh, I've always thought that yoga is like the perfect thing for climbing, you know, for who really wants to achieve mm. incredible goals. Do you find that that like gives you that extra bit of something to accomplish what you're doing? Well, like uh, lately, you know, I don't, I haven't been practicing so much yoga or meditation, but in the past, I, I spent I spent a bunch of years. Um, studying yoga and meditation and I think it was at a time too when I wasn't super motivated on climbing. You weren't like focused on just the climbing. Yeah, you were doing and things, uh, yeah. what I notice for me like when I go climbing, when I feel really motivated on climbing, it really gives me that that one-pointed focus that uh, that meditation gives. So that's kind of my way of accessing that that uh, meditative mental state is, is through climbing, you know. Your full name is Chris, Chris Om Prakash Sharma. Is that Indian? Or do you have it Indian? Is, yeah, Om Prakash Beautiful and name. Sharma. They're both Indian names. Yeah. So, my mother and my father, when they married, they were studying from a, a yogi named Baba Haridas. Yeah. And he gave them a, a, a last name Sharma. And so, when I was born, he gave me another name too. So. Brilliant. <laughs> Whenever I was in India, people were always looking at me like, trying to figure out like why. You don't look Indian. <laughs> Why is your last name Sharma? Because it's a really common name. It's like Smith or something in, really? in the U.S. Sharma is in India. So it's kind of curious. 